Hey peeps, it's your girl Daxani, and welcome to my first episode of my sleep paralysis experience. So I figured since I didn't want to join any October... As I was saying, I didn't want to join any October prompts this year for art, so I'm deciding to draw out my sleep paralysis demons or people or nice spirits that I've experienced for spooky season this year. So in these episodes, I will be drawing out the four different things that I have seen within these four sleep paralysis experiences, and I've lived in four different places um, each time that this has happened. So um, yeah, enjoy these videos and uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Bye! <laughs> For those who do not know what sleep paralysis is, it is, according to the web, a temporary inability to move or speak while falling asleep or upon waking. Sleep paralysis most often occurs in people who have narcolepsy or sleep apnea, but it can affect anyone. And that anyone is me. I am anyone. However, I've heard that people who have dealt with sleep paralysis have not seen anything, but then you do have some people who have seen stuff during their sleep paralysis. So, um, the times that I've had it, I've seen something different each time. So, in this episode, I will tell you about the cloaked figure that I've seen in my first ever experience with sleep paralysis. I was in my mid-twenties when I first had my sleep paralysis. And I've also heard people who experience this are often stressed. Not sure how true that is, but for a fact, I indeed was definitely stressed during my first experience. See, what happened was my parents were on the verge of getting a divorce and I was really heartbroken even though I saw it coming miles away, but it still hurt nonetheless because it was becoming a reality. So I'm fumbling with a bunch of feelings. I'm upset. I'm sad, you know, and I feel like my family is broken. So it's like I've grown up with my parents being together for a long time. And so for them departing and it wasn't really a nice departure. So I was all over the place emotionally and even mentally. I blocked out a lot of things that happened during this time between my parents so some of the information as far as like you know just what was going on between them and the house that we lived in it might be a little bit muggy but I'm gonna try my best but we lived in a two-story house me my parents and my brother who was off at college during this time and I think my dad had moved out first as my mom was still looking for a smaller place because I decided to live with her and so we were just kind of packing up all of the other stuff and trying to figure out what to put into storage and what to take with us and all that stuff. So that's, that's probably as much as I remember. But one night, laying on my back, fast asleep, I suddenly started to feel something pushing me down into the mattress. And I didn't really think anything of it until it started to get deeper. The pressure was starting to feel a little bit tighter and then next thing I know I felt my eyes open up and I sensed the presence over me and it's like as if this presence faded in and it was this cloaked figure hovering over me as he continued to push my body down into the mattress. He had chains on his wrist and some were even floating around him. The way his cloak moved, at first I thought it was like as if he was underwater, but then I started to realize that his cloak seemed like it was made out of smoke. Like even now, like I question like, did I even watch Harry Potter? Because you would think, you know, the mind can be kind of tricky and I think sometimes it it, it does play tricks on you and I, I don't recall watching Harry Potter because I guess me at the time I'm like well this is probably taking up a memory maybe my mind's taking a memory like I'm thinking of the Dementors but the Dementors didn't have chains on them and I don't know and then it didn't really they didn't really have that smoky effect and I remember just seeing the maybe like the nose and mouth of this cloaked figure very pale skinned almost like a, a bluish gray 
tone to this figure. As far as like him having chains, I didn't hear the sound of his chains rattling. He didn't make any type of noise. There was no type of breathing. Even though his presence alone was in complete silence, seeing this figure on top of me, pressing me down to the matches was just terrifying. And I tried calling for help. I tried calling my mom. But all I could do was mumble. It was a very light and soft mumble. I could barely get any words out. I can hear myself, but it's not loud enough to wake my mom up because I felt like I was in serious danger. I kept mumbling and my voice started to raise loud enough until I snapped out of my sleep paralysis, waking myself up completely. I remember breathing heavily as I looked around the room, but surprisingly, my body went right back to sleep. As scared as I was, my body just really wanted to get back into the sleep routine apparently. But normally, like even from like having nightmares, I would stay up a little bit. I would just be like, you know, I would look around the room and if I was brave enough, I would run over to my light switch because most of the time my light switch is always be on the other side of the room. But I don't know, I must have been really tired. Maybe I'm just mentally stressed and tired where my body's like, nope, we're just gonna go back to sleep. Let's not think nothing of it. But the next morning, my body was really sore from where I was being pushed down. So it was like my arms were sore, my thighs, and a little bit of my waist. It, my body was just really sore. And I can't even tell you if I worked out that day of the sleep paralysis before it happened. Um, I know I was kind of on and off of exercising. Um, but being as stressed as I was, I probably wasn't at the time, but I, I, I don't know. It was kind of blur. Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. I don't know. Even if it was the case that I did work out earlier that day and I'm just sore from that, just the fact that I saw this cloaked figure hovering above me, pushing me down into the mattress and I wake up sore, that's scary either way, whether I went to the gym or not. I remember that whole day, I was just trying to think of like, did that mean something? Was that actually something something like I didn't even know what sleep paralysis was at this time it, it was all just question marks to me I've never had this experience so as I said before this is my first ever experience with sleep paralysis so I'm I have all these questions and and I've always been kind of curious when it comes to like the paranormal probably wouldn't want to summon any ghosts <laughs> or anything I don't I'm I'm curious but I haven't reached like a point of bravery to want to do that. And then to uh, like doing my research throughout the years, I think you really have to know what you're doing. If you do want to contact the spirit, the spirits and stuff, you, you can't mess around with that. So I don't even try, like I'll put it out there jokingly, like, yeah, I want to do a Ouija board and stuff, but no, no, on the reality spectrum, I'm not really <laughs> experienced enough. I don't want to do something wrong. I don't even want to do something that the internet tells me to do or what's the right way to do it. No, 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 no. I don't think so. So I used to be really into looking up the meaning of dreams, right? So like the stuff that you see in your dreams, I always had this thing inside me. Like maybe it's a sign from something the universe that's trying to tell me something right and so I would always have this obsession with looking up dreams and their meanings but at this time I didn't really consider this a dream because it just felt too real but I'm going to look it up right now so we can break this down so first I'm going to look up the meaning of a figure or a cloaked figure and then the second one, I'm going to look up chains because this figure had chains. So for the first one is a cloaked figure. And according to this website called uh, Dreams, dreamsopedia.com, it says, a cloaked figure denotes disappointments in love. You are living life in the fast lane. You are showering someone with gifts or love. Your dream is 
a harbinger for the merging of the female and male aspects of your character. You are able to rise above unfavorable circumstances. And seeing a figure in your dreams signifies your inability to place your trust in someone. You need to exercise control in your life. Your hard work and efforts will pay off in the long run. The dream is a symbol for feelings of hopelessness. You are going around in circles over a problem or situation. So this brings up something that also happened in this time, okay? I was in a relationship with somebody, but it was a very toxic relationship because let's just say I end up finding out that I'm the side piece, okay? <laughs> I am the side chick and the person I was dating, like, like he met my family and stuff, but it turns out he was engaged, right? Because his fiance actually hit me up a couple of times claiming that they were engaged, that they're together and blah, blah. They live together and all this stuff. And look, there were so many red flags I can tell you today that I ignored so much back then. And everything that it's that this dream dictionary is saying makes complete sense because I was really showering this person with gifts. I was, and then I think this whole issue that we had of me being the side chick and finding out he was engaged and all that stuff. Yeah, that really definitely disappointed me when it came to my love life. It makes, it makes sense. And not only that, I think my, being my parents were divorced, I was kind of looking at love in a very, very negative light right now. But I also looked up cloak, right? Because this figure was wearing a cloak. So if I look up cloak in the dream dictionary, it says that it suggests hard work, diligence, cooperation, and industry. You are looking down on somebody. You need to come back to reality. This dream refers to past experiences and feelings that you associate with that particular aroma. You need to rethink or replan your course of actions and set yourself on a better path. If I would have just really looked into this back then, it probably would have saved me a lot of heartache. And I probably wouldn't have been so dumb back then. <laughs> but it makes sense as I'm reading this. So this is all new information to me. So now we're going to look up the meaning of chains. Which I think it's kind of obvious, but um, it says the dream of chains represents feeling of bondage, confinement, or restriction, feeling controlled or unable to escape something in your waking life, feeling intentionally held back from your true potential, feeling limited, feeling like a victim, feeling used, hating your job, or disliking having situations made for you. Difficulty freeing yourself from responsibility. I'm kind of upset that I didn't really take it, take this experience into consideration as far as looking up the meaning of what I saw. Um, but I, you know, of course, I think the first experiences, I mean, we have these questions, but for this instance, like I said, it really didn't seem like a dream to me. So that's probably why I did not look it up at the time. But reading it now makes complete sense. But it wasn't until the second experience that I didn't start doing my research on it, which you guys will hear in the next video. If you guys have any type of experience yourself dealing with sleep paralysis, please comment those experience down below because I do not want to feel alone. Um, but I'm curious to know everyone's experience. I'm actually curious to know people's thoughts on just seeing things in the sleep paralysis moment. Do you think it's real? Do you think it's just all in the mind? Like, wh what are your true thoughts? So, yeah. So if you guys like this story, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, feel free to subscribe. Don't feel obligated to. It's just a suggestion. And once again, thank you all for listening. And thanks for watching. And I shall chat with you soon in the next video. Bye.